Why didn't they loan out the twins for that one? There were supposed <laughs> to be twins in that show. Like loan them out, Jesus. like a twin service. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Send them in a U-Haul. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Lovecast, the Boys Love Podcast. I'm your host, Alexa, and with me are my fellow hosts, Pixie and Kayla. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. So Pixie's mm-hmm. obviously in a bit of a different location right now, which you'll see mm-hmm. more about that from our socials in the coming weeks, but she is in America right now, which is mm-hmm. exciting. Um yeah. Yeah, so we have some fun stuff planned in that vein. Um, But today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about The Eclipse, the GMM TV series that just recently finished. But before we get into that, we have another uh, failed fan meet to talk about. Um, Yeah. Third one, third third one in 2022. Mm -hmm. Um, So this was the uh, Paris fan meet that was originally meant to be a Jeff and gameplay fan meet. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it became um, Jeff could no longer attend with his Beyond Cloud schedules. So gameplay's fellow castmates from Work From Heart, including Folk and Naman, and one other actor was there whose name I'm not familiar with. Um, But they then were to attend the event along with gameplay to kind of have some other people there to beef it up a little Mm -hmm. bit and make up for Jeff not being able to attend. And so they were in Paris. Um, Everything was seemingly going according to plan. And then the day of the fan meet came and basically fans were lining up outside the venue. Like it was to the point where people were already preparing for the fan meet when it got canceled suddenly. Um, And like gameplay and his, co-stars ended up basically just meeting fans outside of the venue where they were supposed to have the fan meet briefly and like taking pictures with them and stuff like that. And the uh, company that was putting on the fan meet didn't release a statement until several days after the cancellation. It was like five days later. Um, And they basically said that like the venue was the conditions were unsafe, I guess. And so they couldn't proceed with it, but yeah that's such a stupid excuse like you rented that venue how does it suddenly become unsafe yeah Yeah. i don't know if they weren't doing like any checks before the day of the event but that doesn't seem right to me yeah that's on them honestly i felt like when the whole shit went down with um with jeff and, and beyond cloud and this French group um, I felt like they sort of were trying to put a lot of blame over on Beyond Cloud and maybe like use that as an excuse to get out of it their statement when everything went down with Jeff was so very unprofessional um, was like I was so aggressive reading that like someone whoever wrote that took it so personally yeah and then put that out as like their professional statement about the whole situation and it was just like I feel like I guess that might have been a good indicator of what kind of um, event company they were but mm-hmm. yeah it's just a mess it's so unfortunate that this keeps happening with these international fan meets i mean this is the mm-hmm. third one this year and i just feel sorry for the artists and their management who are putting in time like they were already in paris like I yeah mean, hopefully they at least got to enjoy their time there but they had already put that cost into flying to mm-hmm. paris and doing all of that mm-hmm. only for the reason they went there to yeah. get canceled at the literal last moment yeah, yeah. I just hope that people didn't blame the actors involved right. for everything yeah. because, yeah, I know initially when it was supposed to be a Jeff and gameplay thing, a lot of people were, like, going against Jeff or at least, mm-hmm. like, criticizing the way it was handled, but it really is something that's out of their control completely. Yeah. Like, they just show up. 
So, yeah. literally, they get their schedule and they go to the events that they're going to, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It <laughs> it's very unfortunate. And, then, like, it's it's so sad because you might, like, now the, the um, companies in Thailand will be very, like, probably against um, having these fan meets in other countries that they don't personally handle themselves yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's and that's gonna make it hard for them to come to a lot of places um Mm -hmm. yeah i just don't know i think these these event planning companies and these fan groups that want to plan these events just don't have any idea how much goes into it and i just i mean we said this before i feel like if you're gonna try and take on something as big as planning a fan meet, you need to have people on board who have experience with that. And I feel like it just keeps happening that these small groups are kind of stepping up and wanting to do this, which I know comes from a good place, but in the end it ends up hurting the artists and the Mm -hmm. groups themselves more than anything. So I don't know. Yeah. 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 Hopefully we'll see a successful fan meet soon. I think the jaw first one in Switzerland went well from what I know. Mm -hmm. So at least that's one, but hopefully, hopefully some more will be able to happen soon that don't end in disaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, moving into our main topic for today, we are going to be talking about the eclipse. Mm -hmm. Um, And since Pixie, we know how how much you have been <laughs> raving about this show since yep. you started watching it. Tell us about your initial thoughts and feelings after you watched the finale the other week. Oh, oh my god, after the finale? I was I was I was going through it because I was just like, <laughs> oh my god, this is ended. I needed to not end. <laughs> Yeah. I needed to continue more, <laughs> but uh, I really, I really liked how they tied up everything. I do think that there might been some plot stuff that should have been more explained. Some characters mm-hmm. needed a little more development, but at the end, I think they did a very good job at like giving us a good ending and giving us some domesticated bliss. She and just... love in a finale, some domesticated bliss. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And and you really like see the difference from episode one to the final episode in just mm-hmm. how they're like how they act towards each other and it's like there's a really clear path throughout the whole series. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really fun especially with um with the uh, i ah, how he comes to terms with his sexuality and just yeah. yes, in the end yes. accepts it completely and um, yeah yeah i think it felt very fulfilling as a mm-hmm. finale uh, there were definitely some scenes that made me tear up like the scenes yeah. with the parents i was like <laughs> Oh man! Oh yeah. Was, yeah. Those scenes always get me, but it was so well done, especially because we have seen the journey that mm-hmm. he has had throughout the series, and just having those scenes was just like it felt re- res- resolution. I felt the resolution for him, yeah. and so then mm-hmm. it comes back as a viewer, and you feel that resolution on your own as well. Mm-hmm. And so I think like scenes like that just really brought the whole thing home for me. Yeah. And how they mm-hmm. they use like the filming and like uh, on the boat like it starts with him alone on the boat mm-hmm. and yeah. ends with Oof. them together. I'm, I'm always a sucker looking for at each like other. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. I love when things come full circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think everything ended very neatly, at least for mm-hmm. Ak and Ian's story. Mm-hmm. Um. 
Yeah, I love a good coming out, like, hey, I'm coming out and this is my boyfriend scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like a sucker for those. So I love that scene. Um, I have some thoughts that we might get into later about Tua, his character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I can only speak on Ak and Ayan right now. And it's just mm-hmm. that I really love them. I think mm-hmm. they made me a little obsessed with Cal first. Oh, um. Yes, <laughs> definitely. As is everyone right now. Oh my god, I I've literally bought the first like box set I've ever bought. That's the, that's, that's the power oh of god. the eclipse right there. Yeah, that I really. Is. It. And oh I bought the sweater, and I'm just like, I, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about buying the sweater, but no. I didn't. I wanted the keychain too, but it's uh, all everything was like sold out. I'm just like, mm-hmm. damn it. The first mm-hmm. in Kaltung impact right there when everything's just oh. sold out completely. Yeah, you know, yeah. I never like like imagined them as a ship. Mm-hmm. But now mm-hmm. that they are one, I'm just like, how did we not see that? <laughs> Right, right. The hidden power of the, it's the friendship to BL pairing pipeline. I'm telling mm-hmm, you guys, exactly. it wins every time. Yep. Yeah. Let's all it's just so thank PO for telling them to use first and cow for this. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into some discussion about the plot and execution. Um, so I feel like one of the first things we should talk about is how some of the elements of the story played out, um, like such as the curse. I remember mm-hmm. early on seeing a lot of, I don't know if backlash is the right word, but I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, especially in the early episodes, were surprised by how not irrelevant, but less... I guess irrelevant, irrelevant is the only word I can think of right now, but less prom, less prominent the whole curse uh-huh. aspect seemed compared to the initial trailer, which we know the initial, right. mm. like, pilot trailers that GMMTV puts out always change and yeah, are always, like, do. vastly different from what we get in the final product. Mm-hmm. But I know a lot of people were mentioning that early on. And so, I don't know, what do you guys think about how it played out in the long run? So I, I like, like, the whole curse is basically just a red herring for the whole story. And, and Mm -hmm. for those who don't know what a red herring is, it's just basically the, the, um, the pretend villain. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's what the show wants you to believe is the bad guy. And there are, like, a hundred red herrings in this show. Like, they, they try to point you towards everyone. Everyone is the bad guy, (laughs) except who is the real bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. but the, the curse was really effective at um, pushing the plot ahead. Mm-hmm. I mean, you needed something to get I in there. You needed you needed the mystery to sort of like uh, get to know these characters and and the situations they are in. And it, the curse um, really explains a lot of. Uh, ox motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So obviously, mm-hmm. it's like a huge thing of the show, and I think like it. I honestly, I think they could have played it more than they did. It's sort of when they got to the got to the uh, reveal <laughs> of who was doing the curse and everything. It just like yeah, okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no more curries. Yeah, it, it <laughs> did feel kind of swept yeah, over yeah. in that aspect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just like how the curse was kind of used as like a tool to instill fear in the students. Mm-hmm. So like obviously it wasn't real, even though yeah. in the beginning I think there was debate over whether it was, but... Mm-hmm. It's just really interesting to see how something that literally isn't real could influence an entire system to just keep going. Yeah. I mean, it it does, like, reflect society today. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> like it, how societal fear sort of like pressures people to stay in line in some aspects. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I was going to go on like a whole rant about like the panopticon and how like the fear of being watched, like, pushes you to Mm -hmm. behave a certain way, like getting into all of that aspect of things, which I feel like kind of ties into what was going on here. Um, But yeah, just this idea of like using things that don't actually exist to get people to follow a certain way of life or a certain Mm -hmm. rules that you want them to follow um, definitely speaks to the larger society. And I definitely think that was done on purpose, knowing who was behind the creation of the show and, their experience that we know of so Mm -hmm. yeah it's also interesting how it seems like the curse targets the openly queer students Mm -hmm. really anyone that's different but we see it with them the most yeah yeah and it's very interesting that the like pusher of the curse also is like closeted yeah Mm. yeah yeah, that internalized homophobia and the expectations. And how it's are- especially often in closeted queer people, they like sort of overcompensate that mm-hmm. uh, like they don't want to be a part of it or something like been brought up mm-hmm. to like, and they try to deny it so hard that it's just, yeah. yeah. It's like that fear yeah. coming back into play of like, you go so vehemently to the other side of things because you think that will protect you more from being found out basically. So Mm, leaning into homophobia is like a way to protect yourself from being outed as queer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Kayla, you had in the notes that you could talk about the astrological significance of the eclipse. Please do. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, I guess this is going to be a little astrological lesson. Yes. Um, because, of course, like the first things that I noticed in this series were like astrological symbolism things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's see. I have a lot of notes on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, there's like the astrological significance of the eclipse itself and like how it relates to the school curse. So, like, in astrology, a lunar eclipse represents an end to something, like a Mm -hmm. certain way of living, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, It also represents a change of heart, like your feelings are being flipped about something. And I I feel like... spot on. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like both of those are super relevant when you think about, like, what Ak goes through. Mm -hmm. Because, like, at first he's trapped in this oppressive system that he's told to keep enforcing but after he meets Ian it's like he starts to realize how much damage he's caused to others and mm. to himself honestly so yeah. he he's like in performing the curse he is actually the one that's cursed yeah, yeah. that's a really and good way to put it actually yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah also another really interesting thing that I don't think was a coincidence is that lunar eclipses are like the time when people who practice certain religions or even practice like witchcraft, that's the time when they usually do rituals to break curses. Ooh. Oh so my God. I thought and you that know, was really on, interesting too. On, <laughs> on the on the uh, ceiling, when the eclipse is happening, that's sort of like a turning point for Ak. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then you have the significance of their names. So, like, Ayan means solstice. And there are two different solstices. There's the winter and summer ones. And the summer one is represented by light and awakening. And then the winter one is darkness and patience. So I feel like the fact that Ayan's name could mean both of those things is interesting. Because... If you look at his character, he has, like, a lot of demons, and they put, like, this big Mm -hmm. emphasis on him being troubled and depressed, Mm -hmm. and then he... But at the same time, he also has this, like, spirit, like, he wants to keep fighting Mm -hmm. and, like, keep living for his uncle to kind of get revenge, even if it's not the best reason to (laughs) keep fighting. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, Ock's name means sun, which I feel like is self-explanatory because he becomes, like, a beacon of hope that's shining on Ion. And, like, it's like even when he's having a hard time, he provides Ion with enough strength for the both of them, I feel like. Yeah. And I just think it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that my symbolism. Oh my God. I'm glad that yeah. my useless knowledge is finally coming <laughs> handy because <laughs> I had so many thoughts about this astrologically, but that's basically it. No, that's yeah. so cool. Because uh-huh. like I didn't I didn't even realize that was what their names meant and just mm-hmm. like it all ties in so well. And so I love hearing about like that kind of stuff and hearing it from yeah. someone who's knowledgeable about it. It's really cool knowing stuff like that when you're watching shows because like now I watch the show not knowing what those things meant and and you like when you know it you get like deeper layers and it's just mm-hmm. so much more interesting. Yeah, I love that feeling of like looking back and like realizing how the things you watch can tie into these things that you're learning about now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for that, Kayla. A little, a little astrology <laughs> corner. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So I feel like in terms of plot execution, I think we have to talk about episode 11. Cause I feel like that was the one episode that people seem to have the most issues with. Um, first of all, with Tua, which we can get into, but also in terms of like the, the pacing of the story. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of the biggest things I saw was how there was that whole scene that happened with Tua and shit hit the fan. And then like, it, yeah. it, it basically just like within the same episode was resolved without any real resolution. And they yeah. kind of like moved on to like the let's make a BL situation or whatever was going on. Um, yeah. And so I feel like a lot of people felt like that was the one moment in the series where the pacing and the writing didn't quite keep up with how par it had been for the whole first 10 episodes or so. Yeah. Honestly, I think they didn't explain to us a character enough to uh, explain why he ended up doing that. I mean, it came out of nowhere. And and I, in afterthought, I can like sort of explain to myself, okay, this is how he is. I do understand that he doesn't really like um, secrets and everything. But at the same time, he was pushing the curse even more so he was keeping his own secrets and Mm -hmm. he suddenly just wanted to air everything in front of everyone and it felt it just felt like it came out of nowhere and you didn't get like you said any resolution to it i wish they would have made it longer just so they could explain why Mm -hmm. to uh was like he was and then why everyone just was okay with it moved on with it and <laughs> yeah was like no, <laughs> yeah no consequences to what happened there yeah i mean ak has been like really struggling with his sexual identity and then tua just comes out and outs him and he and that coming from him? another queer person who like we've seen what Tua mm-hmm. has experienced for being a gay person throughout the mm-hmm. series and then him being the person to out Ock and Ion as a couple just felt like I don't I don't know it was just a weird choice to me yeah I yeah. mean you can notice how Tua uh, doesn't really have think it's a big deal being queer because he's mm-hmm. always uh, he's fine with the uh, being out with Con, like, he doesn't really think that's a big deal. He just holds back in respect to the person he loves. But at the same time, like, he's queer. He knows, he knows how that affects people. And he knows Ak is like, uh, like, a um, what do they call them? Prefects? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's gonna have consequences when you go to a school like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's almost like Tua has some kind of privilege uh, yeah. where he is able to 
be mm-hmm. more comfortable and out, and then mm-hmm. Ak doesn't have that, definitely. Yeah, I I have the same exact thoughts about episode 11 with the whole outing situation, because honestly, I suspected him from the beginning. Like, yeah. whenever that stuff with the journal started happening. Yeah. But the mm, the reveal of it actually being him was kind of weird to me. Yeah. Because uh, the way he deliberately tried to make the movement look bad to keep people focused on the fact mm-hmm. that there was, like, discrimination happening, it honestly reminded me a lot of, like, Antifa. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> like, if you don't know what Antifa is, it's like this anti-fascist group mm-hmm. that, like, uses violence as a means mm-hmm. to, like, get messages across. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it, I mean, that's all I could speak to on that. But it really reminded me of the methods that Tua uses to kind of put that energy into doing whatever he has to do to make people pay attention to what's being said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It reminded me a lot of that. And I didn't Not like him about the it. consequences that come from that. Yeah. Yeah. I think my biggest problem with Tua is that, like, there was no consequences to his actions at all. It was so None. Weird. He didn't lose friends. There weren't even arguments, really. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, they barely even addressed it, I feel like. Right. So, I, I, I don't know. Like, that's the one, like, really big critic I have with this show is that that just felt very off and it felt like they didn't think it through or that mm-hmm. something's missing like there should be yeah. some sort of thread connecting this and it was cut <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. especially when yeah. it, it was so strong up until that point and even like the finale yeah. was like a strong the finish out was it was awesome. just like episode 11 felt really disjointed from the rest of the series and the mm-hmm. way it was paced and and the plot, how the plot played out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. kind of feel like they maybe had a different way to do it and then decided that they didn't have time to do that. So they mm. just rewrote it and and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and at last minute kind of thing. And that's never, <laughs> never a good I thing. Really think, I really think that's what happened because this whole mm-hmm. production was really rushed. Mm-hmm. Like, you can yeah. tell, like, their hair yeah. and stuff like that is so inconsistent throughout the show yeah. because they had to go yeah. back and film stuff, like, even, like, two weeks before the episode aired. Yeah. So. Oh, and the poor boys in the pool all day. And oh, my God. The raising their scenes asses of them, like, off. shivering so oh, violently. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. Yep. Man, I feel like the other big thing that happened it was in episode 11 also right when chadok and dika's relationship was revealed was that also in episode 11 or was that in episode 10 i think it does happen right after the um, reveal of the two as reveal yeah that was was, like at the end of the show that was truly wild (laughs) oh yeah Yeah. i mean i did not see it well you know, I saw it coming when I, the, the first scene, uh, when you see the, uh, car of Chadok and he visited the, like, the scene where, um, he oh, took yeah. the suicide. That's yeah. when I knew, like, I wrote in the chat, in the Discord, I think, <laughs> or on Twitter, I'm not sure. No, it happened in the last episode, actually. That's the first scene it in the may last have. episode. Yeah. Yeah, it was at so, the end. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that and I'm just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> you did <My> it. <laughs> oh, and him finding out that the ex is dead and didn't just move to the other yeah. school and is ignoring him. Oh, that was the first time I felt sympathy for him because Literally. the whole time you're like you hate him because of how he's treating Ak and the mm-hmm. other students but then you learn like damn 
he was basically taken down by the same system that he's yeah he was brainwashed yeah Mm -hmm. like he was so brainwashed he hugged that horrible woman yeah yeah and i feel like that kind of shows like where things could have gone for ak if he hadn't basically been able to break himself out of the curse like this queer person that's repressing themselves and existing within the system that pushed them into repressing themselves basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah okay so yeah he's other- kind of like you know he's kind of like Ak, just he didn't have eyes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I uh, is like a lot more he perseveres I guess mm-hmm. but yeah. then if you think back to the time when they were in school they probably had less chances or yeah, opportunities to true. be as outspoken it's very true so, yeah it's sad. Mm-hmm. it is so the last thing we wanted to talk about in regards to like the plot, um, the youth rights group that's formed in the series mm-hmm. and how that can be tied to larger school movements in Thailand and like the larger youth movements in Thailand, Thailand as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think stuff like that is always very pointed, especially looking at the political climate in Thailand and how often we're seeing protests for democracy from younger people and honestly people of all ages in Thailand, but um, very much a tie into the real life political movements. I think that are existing in Thailand right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting how GMMTV recently have been tying a lot of their shows into actual like events in mm-hmm. society mm-hmm. in Thailand, like with not me and yeah. It's, yeah it's I never thought I would see GMM TV there making like mm-hmm. show releasing shows that have like such big political, political statements, statements. In them. Yeah. yeah 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 it's pretty crazy it's all thanks to the people working in GMM yeah. TV hundred yeah. all the <laughs> Yeah, all the directors, screenwriters mm-hmm. that yeah. want to make stuff like this. Yeah, I wonder if they've gotten to like a uh, like a capitalistic power kind of place where uh, they can do basically what they want I and not so. get the government on their backs. I, I mean, think... yeah, yeah. I think like. I can't remember when it was you were talking about it, but it is a recent episode where, like, I feel like they're at the point where they can take these kind of liberties or what one might Mm -hmm. consider a risk without seeing it impact them in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, And in terms of the government, like, I I don't know. I can't say how much I'm not, like, familiar with how much they have. Mm -hmm a say in like censorship and television and stuff like that. I assume they do to a pretty decent degree. Um, But yeah, it's, it's very interesting to, to see GMM TV kind of step into and, you know, coming from a corporation like GMM TV, like it's like, they're really just putting it out. Like Kayla said, the, the impact all comes from the people who are working on the drama, but like, Mm -hmm to be able to see these dramas on a platform as big as GMM TV is definitely very unexpected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that kind of talks ties into talking about the direction and writing in the series. So talking about P golf, who was the director of the series, mm-hmm. Uh, they're a non-binary filmmaker and politician, so um, they're on the parliament, or I don't know if they actively are, but they were elected to Thailand's parliament in 2019, um, and they were the first openly transgender person to be mm-hmm. elected to the parliament and have a political position in that way. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you can so clearly see how that ties back into the series, both in regards to being a politician and also in regards to the way that they handle queerness within the series. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
And the screenwriter, Piyoki, who is also the founder of All This Entertainment, who was the co-producer on this, I think, um, is also a queer screenwriter. So, um, yeah, just just having two queer people involved and at, at the forefront of the production, I think, is 100% what we can contribute to mm-hmm. it being as impactful as it was. Yeah. 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 I like that they both... Um, had guest roles in the show. Yeah. Um, Peak Off was in the cafe and the The little maid outfit. (laughs) Um, And then Piyoki guested as the school official. So I always love seeing those tidbits when people involved in the production, like have a little guest role. It's always really cute Mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really it was really fun seeing how much they interacted with Mm -hmm. fans online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Like the Twitter spaces, they were willing to like answer any questions Mm -hmm. and you just feel that they really care about this project and Mm -hmm. they care about connecting with fans over it. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool that they would do so many fan interaction, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I do love that. They're like, this is, openly queer people showing support for BL and that it's not just yeah. some frivolous uh, entertainment for straight people. Yeah. Yeah, I think that definitely adds like a certain level of impact to the stories and how they're going out and um watching BLs coming from queer people. Um I guess there's more like I don't want to say more meaning in it because I've, I've watched plenty of BLs that weren't, you know, directed or written by queer people that were very meaningful to me. But I think like, I'm sorry, my cat is freaking out right now. (laughs) Um, I think you can definitely see where their influence comes in, into the story and like watching that as also a queer person. It's just really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just cool to see gay people thriving yeah <laughs> in, like creating series and <laughs> putting out yeah. content for a company like gmm tv yeah, yeah it's amazing to see yeah i mean you can see their touch in it like mm-hmm. it's it's very obvious when when someone queer has been involved in the process and yeah. and it's it does like especially for these shows like it's lent a lot to the story that there's queer presence on it mm-hmm. and giving it the little push to just be extra fantastic mm-hmm. yeah yeah kind of in that same vein of talking about the production and direction so all this entertainment which is P. Yohi's company I believe that they co-produced on the series um, but I'm not entirely sure how big their involvement was compared to how much of it was done just by GMM TV. But mm-hmm. I know all this entertainment was doing a lot of the promotion and um, that kind of stuff when it came to the series. So I'm curious if either of you noticed any like differences in the production compared to a typical GMM TV series that you can think of. Because I was trying to think about it. I I wasn't sure if anything was coming to mind. So I'm not sure if there's a lot of differences. The the one thing I noticed about this show compared to others is the way they um, did a lot of uh, aesthetic filming. Like Mm. with him on the boat. Mm. And and, and, um, there's a lot of like flying shots and... Um, like when Ak is running down the stairs and the, the swirly stairs, you kind of get an overhead yeah. shot of it. And it's a lot of stuff like that, which give a very artistic feel to the whole mm. filming process. Yeah. And I really love that because it kind of catches your eye more and it gives it more of I don't know. It gives it a different feeling, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It feels more like, I never know what word best to describe it. I just think like indie. Like Mm -hmm. it feels very indie. Mm -hmm. Like there's Um, a lot of passion. Like they didn't have to do that, right? So this is just their mm -hmm. passion that um, made them do it sort of kind of thing. They could have gotten Mm -hmm. by by just filming normally. They didn't have to do that. They could probably save time and money on not doing it and uh, so that just shows that there's a lot of passion into how they show each shot and and how they love the story putting a lot of emphasis on the artistry and like letting the artistry kind of shine through um in terms of a lot of the shots that they use and the coloring and things like that Mm -hmm. yeah I honestly didn't notice any differences between yeah. this and other shows. Like maybe maybe it was a little on the short side, like the episodes were very short, right. but yeah. I'm sure there have been other dramas that had short episodes. So Yeah. I I don't really know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I was just kind of thinking out loud when I said that cuz I I was trying to think of something think of anything while I was doing this, the run sheet and nothing came to mind. But at the same mm-hmm. time, it did kind of feel different from some of the other GMM TV series. So, yeah. I mean, it does, for me, it does, it feels darker than what we're used to. Even with not me, it still feels somehow that the whole, like it just had a darker shadow over it mm-hmm. somehow. Yeah, actually, this series reminded me a lot of The Gifted. Um, because right. It, like, has mm-hmm. that, it has that same, like, dark school corruption type thing. Yeah. And even yeah. even the two actors um, yeah, who play the, the school officials the play the school officials in The Gifted. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I felt like there were a lot of similarities in, like, tone mm-hmm. and theme between mm-hmm. those shows. But that's the only one I could think of that had like a very mm-hmm. dark tone and was set mm-hmm. in a high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Talking about the OST. Um, I think the only OST that they released was over the moon by Kao Tung. Mm-hmm. Um, but God, it was so good. <laughs> yeah. That's all the they music needed. music video, the song, <laughs> it was, it delivered everything. All these boys can so sing. Good. What is this? <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> We're entering an era of GNM TV boys that can actually sing. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that myself, like, I'm going to be all the streams on this song on Spotify <laughs> <laughs> because... I'll be surprised if it doesn't show up in my repeat playlist. Like right. uh, it's, it's mm-hmm. so good. It's gonna be in your Spotify so wrapped. It yeah. might be. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, no, he's amazing and the song is amazing. I was like Googling frantically because I was like, there can't only be one. But every <laughs> every time I search like the Eclipse OST, that was the only one that came up. And so mm-hmm. hey. Yeah. It did what it needed to do, and yeah. it's amazing, so it works. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for some reason, I never thought of Kao Tang as, like, a singer. I don't know why, but you never get that, like, the other shows he's been in, like, other BLs as the, the side character. He's never, mm. like, had any, like, musical roles. And in Ton Hon Chan did he sing in that at all? I don't know. Like, I fell off that, that Nothing show, about but... that show was on my radar <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be what I answer that question. <laughs> what did, what did, um, what did she call it? Uh, Ton Hon Chocolate? Was <laughs> No oh. one could say, turn on Chun Lati, so it was on, on chocolate. It's like Benedict Cumberbatch, you say it different every time, but you always yeah. know what show someone's they're talking about when you say yeah. it. But honestly, oh. we should forget about that show. Yeah, the best. The best. 
It's for the best, yeah. Okay, so finally talking, moving into acting um, and thoughts on the pairings. Um, I feel like obviously we've kind of talked about the chemistry between First and Kowtun a little bit, but they're, they could be a new powerhouse, I think. Um, Definitely. With the yeah. way that they have just like gone from zero to 1,000. Yeah. I knew I liked First. Mm-hmm. I knew I liked Kowtun. I did not expect them to like be in the together, <laughs> so well. together. <laughs> yeah. it was like it came it felt like it came out of nowhere as well <laughs> i don't know i i am so glad they did this and i am all that it's the first like ship i'm on board with <laughs> like a hundred percent that i like so you know it's real <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I, I also think like the MMTV are probably going to push them more since they were so fast at uh, giving out like first cow m- merch and all of that, giving them their own logo their little logo and whatnot. And stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious about what the new and next or the showcase mm-hmm. will look like. Um, they have so many boys now. But boys yeah. Now. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of them are really good and a lot of them mm-hmm. have, very strong backings and very strong chemistry. So, and like first and Kaohsiung are definitely up there. So, yeah. Do you think they're going to gonna do the same to Neo and Louis that they did to like Top Tap and Mike? Oh, <laughs> keep them forever as a side couple. I don't want no, that. No, no. Am I cursing this now? <laughs> Why would you say that, Pixie? No, no but Top Tap and Mike were, were, they were huge. I mean, there is a lot of speculation that um, You Are My Favorite was originally supposed to be Top Tap and Mike before um, shit hit the fan with them. And, like, they did have a very strong following as, like, they the did. side couple. <laughs> the side couple <laughs> pairing. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I feel like... Um, she literally just laid on top of my keyboard. Um, <laughs> um, and I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, Top it's tap, gone. Mike, it's gone. <laughs> Neo Lewis. Oh, I feel like um, it's kind of been hit or miss with those. Like, Top Tap and Mike were very strong for so long. And obviously, we don't know what happened with them. Um, yeah. But now, Top Tap is seemingly no longer under GMM TV. Yeah. Um, and then someone else mentioned, kind of in a similar vein, um, Frank and Drake, who obviously yeah. they did oh. have a series, uh, but then oh, after that series, boys. they were like, someone mentioned them as like the side pairing in Bright and Win, <laughs> Bright and Win series after that. Yeah. So, um, oh. and Frank is no longer under GMM TV either. So, I don't know, yeah. is being the side couple pairing a curse? I don't know. <laughs> Might be. Ooh, maybe. I hope not. But yeah. yeah, I really like Neo and Louis, so I mean I wanna yeah, be opposed to seeing like them. All the other parents as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a> struggle. <laughs> <laughs> like I wouldn't be opposed to seeing them as like a secondary couple in another show next year. Um because mm. I feel like they're definitely I mean, they're newer in the same way. Well, they were in Fish Upon the Sky. They were paired in Fish Upon the Sky as well. I totally forgot about that because that was a show. Um, (laughs) But I feel like with this, with the Eclipse, they've really started to gain more traction as a pairing. Um, Mm -hmm. And maybe that's just because the Eclipse was more well-received than Fish Upon the Sky was. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope we see them in some form next year because they're, yeah. so, they're so cute together, and I really yeah, like they their are energy. And they they honestly are the cutest when we talk to them in the, our interview with them. Like, oh, I I I would give them the world, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Do we have oh any um, supporting cast that stood out to you? I know 
Pac was in this, um, who we know from Love Area and who um, was wonderful, like literally carried our Love Area interview because he was translating for everyone. <laughs> um, but I didn't recognize him when I first saw him in this Neither show. Neither did I. Like, oh my it, God. I did a double take when I was looking at the cast list and... Mm-hmm. It, it he I mean he transformed into the character so well because I did not realize it was him. Yeah, yeah. No, they the all the three boys in the youth group kind of thing did a really good job. Mm-hmm. I I really you know the the woman who um, plays the teacher that's wearing like hot pink all the time <laughs> yeah. yeah i am all here for her she was me amazing. too <laughs> in and out of that character i'm oh, here yeah. for her. <laughs> that actress is like oh my goodness i remember seeing some like photos of her that like not weird photos just like photos of her but like she was just like they were kind of like catching traction on Twitter because people were like, "Oh my god, this is the same woman!" Like she's stunning. Like yeah, like yeah, what a woman. Yeah, no, honestly, what a woman. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy who plays Chaduk is really good too. Mm. Uh, they were both really good in The Gifted as well. So yeah. they've been in they've been in some stuff, but yeah. they're both really good. I mean, like, the guy who plays Chadok, like, how he goes from being really stern to suddenly when his secret is revealed and he just softens up and it's so mm-hmm. subtle, but he changes his entire, like, look. Yeah. Yeah, I love subtle emotional acting. And, like, mm-hmm. when you can embrace a character's changes with, like, those subtle excuse me, expressions and Mm -hmm. little things instead of, like, big drastic changes, necessarily. Yeah. Also, um, one of the twins was in this, and I still can't tell them apart. Is it JJ or AJ? (laughs) It's AJ. I had to pull up my drama list because (laughs) there have been so many times that people have pointed out how you can tell them apart, and I feel really bad because every time I look at them, I still get them mixed up, but... AJ was in this, and I always love seeing the twins show up in in um, they need projects. Their own main roles. Yeah, it would be They're interesting. I feel like work. I feel like how have Jim and TV not taken advantage of that yet? Even not yes, in a BL, seriously. but just like putting out a show about twins would be so fun. Honestly, in some Honestly, honestly. With the, you you remember uh, this is love story, L- love mechanic. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Why didn't they loan out the twins for that one? There were supposed <laughs> to be twins in that show. Like loan them out even. like a twin service. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Send them in a U-Haul. <laughs> <laughs> or like imagine. Um, Love in the air with AJ and JJ because wasn't Paiu's brother? Weren't they twins? <laughs> they were supposed to be. Yeah. They were fraternal, yeah, or fraternal, fraternal mm-hmm. twins. Yeah, yeah fraternal. So <laughs> AJ and JJ and love no, in the air. No, yeah, no, do not move Pixie's <laughs> like, like, no. Like I will fight you if you try to erase boss. <laughs> I'm just. It's not gonna happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, like seeing seeing AJ in this was great. Like he, it's always fun to have one of the twins in the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they are great. Yeah. Do Do you think like they were trying to do something with the teacher and AJ's character? Because I, I was getting about like, that. subtle vibes, and I'm just like, oh. this is weird. Why is the teacher there? Some of their moments felt very yeah. borderline. This is a romantic moment to me, and it yeah. made me feel a little bit weird. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 literally a romance we're watching. So why is he having like 
private after school dates with this woman yeah. and then she <laughs> in the final scene oh joins them yeah. at the sea how yeah that's what i thought was so weird why was she there <laughs> like what so jurisdiction man. did she have who invited you <laughs> and the and the parents uh, like ox parents just like yeah this is normal <laughs> <laughs> i think that from what I've seen outside of the show, I think that GMMTV is going to be putting them in something next year because they've been doing like a lot of couple promotions like on their social media and stuff like that. But I was like, mm-hmm. if you wanted to soft launch a pairing in their chemistry, why make it a student teacher? Yeah. Like a weird borderline <laughs> student teacher moment to soft yeah. launch it. Like, I know it's like her first teaching job and everything, but it's still super weird. Aren't they? really young as well yeah, because they're younger right yeah. yeah i don't think they're yeah. like seniors or something like yeah even they're then not it would still be university weird, but... it's not like a university either no, like they're, they're high schoolers they're high schoolers they're high schoolers yeah. no if ands or buts about that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i heard word on the street that the author of the novels is going to make um aj's character in namo a thing. What? I heard I, that. Mm. <laughs> I'm not but, sure if I'm on board with this. <laughs> I just, I don't even remember them interacting, honestly. Yeah, did I they? Know. I don't know. <laughs> when they took the, the, the thing away from him when he was harassing that kid about his cell phone. Mm. Wasn't he there? But he didn't say anything. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. That makes me even more convinced that the whole teacher thing was just GMMTV trying to soft launch a new pairing. Because mm-hmm. then, like, what yeah. what was the point of this weird chemistry and tension between them? Like, I don't like it. <laughs> no. It, I mean, no. What, what was she the doing actress, there? Like... Why is she <laughs> hanging out with students? <laughs> like, <laughs> as a teacher, why are you uh, spending your off time going to the beach with a bunch of like sixteen, seventeen year olds? Like, is, <laughs> is, like I get she was like encouraging him with his filming or helping him out with his film career or whatever, but it makes no sense why she's there either give me more character development that shows their um passive relationship or take her out completely (laughs) not everyone needs a partner someone can be single (laughs) not not everyone needs to end in a pairing like especially as a high schooler it's fine yeah (laughs) we don't need that it added nothing (laughs) oh Oh, yeah. But getting off this, and just like in general thoughts, I I just have something like I wanted to mention. What I really really liked um, the whole part where in the beginning you see it's um, when I is making moves on Ak. He's always like being very careful, taking his time, letting Ak decide, letting Ak push him away if he wants to. But then you see the dream that Ak has, and it's just like mm-hmm. no time to think. And that's what Ak wants at that time because he doesn't want to like have consent. He doesn't. He doesn't like want to think about it. He just like he knows he wants it, but he doesn't want to acknowledge that he wants it. So he wants I to just pull him in and just do it. But I refuses. He wants the consent. He wants the acknowledgement. He wants us to really be on his side in this. And you don't see it until like the pool kiss. That's the first time he actually takes his arms around uh, Mm -hmm. I's neck. And then it just escalates every time they kiss. Every time they have like a moment like that. And at the end, when they're standing doing the wet, wedding <laughs> sort of <laughs> scene <laughs> then it's suddenly Ak is the one pu- putting his hands and pulling I in and mm. I just 
I really like how they progress that showing Ox emotional state as it mm -hmm. progresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had so many intimate moments, like not I even did. with kisses or anything, but like the conversations mm -hmm. that they have about like how they're feeling and stuff. It's so good. Uh, dude, it's like you the know, best part of the series. Uh, mm -hmm. The 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 I I've talked about this before. The the moment when they're in bed and I calls him boyfriend and Ak just smiles oh my and God, it's just smile. like the oh, I <laughs> died. I die every time I see that. <laughs> the smile yeah. like first has the smile just I can't yeah. deal with first smiling. It's it's a lot. It's very worthy. Mm -hmm, it is. Yeah. And especially yeah. in that moment, because you get like this shy smile, and there's so mm -hmm. much emotion. It is that smile, and it's just like, oh god, I want to feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> when is it my turn? For real, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my cat. <laughs> what is wrong with her tonight? Oh my god, she's attention. Crazy. She's like, you don't usually record this late at night. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, okay. Any final thoughts that people want to share before we wrap up for the episode? Honestly, mm -hmm. like, just watch it. I don't know. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. It's like. It, if someone is listening to this and haven't watched it, what is what is wrong with you? <laughs> if you made it this far into the episode and you haven't watched the eclipse yet, you should have been watching it 45 minutes ago. You should have been watching it like two months ago. <laughs> like, you uh, watch it. Yeah. Hmm. I watch a lot of, like, Thai series that I feel like have to do with school corruption. And this is, like, one of the better ones. And I feel like even though it seems very simple on the surface, there's a lot of symbolism in it. Mm. Like, with the astrological stuff and even just, like, relating it to what's going on in mm. real life. Uh, where was I going with that thought? <laughs> My brain is already Everyone needs to go to sleep. <laughs> shutting off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, even though it seems like simple on the surface, there it has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. I feel like you could, we could discuss like episode Analyze. by episode for yeah. Yeah, like hours. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I kind of like that. Even on the surface, it is simple because. I think Pixie, you said earlier, like the cow first, their story is very consistent throughout the mm -hmm. whole series. And I really love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gives you those sweet feelsy moments that I think people come to BL for. Um, but also offers a lot of really strong character growth and development and a lot of symbolism and just a mm -hmm. lot you can think about in every episode. Um, and still getting those moments that make you swoon. So it's really yeah. like the best of both BL worlds, I feel like. Mm. I, I really also kind of like how they did the, um, the dreams that uh, I has uh, mm -hmm. about the suicide and how they, they don't show anything. They don't glorify it in any kind of way or show anything because you know that's not good. To show on TV, um, all science um, says so. So, but they they did it in a way that like is heartbreaking, but at the same time, mm. not too graphic. And I feel like that that that's a theme that goes through the whole series. It's it's like with the spice as well. It's very spicy without being graphic. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the tension they made and, and the subtlety in, in all, in like every touch and every kiss and every word. And yeah, there's a lot. 
there's a lot lot to love but it, it's also for those who just enjoy watching a show just for the entertainment don't want to think about it it's still a good show you don't mm-hmm. need to think yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Like you can, you can, you can think a lot about it and pull a lot out of it, but mm-hmm. you can also still watch it at a surface level and not yeah. feel like you're missing out on what's happening mm-hmm. or like you need to be yeah, yeah. analyzing to understand the show, which I think mm-hmm. a lot of more complex shows kind of make it yeah. so you have to think too hard almost, but this isn't yeah. one of those shows. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, then that's it for our episode this week did you tune into the eclipse while it was airing or have you recently binge it what did you think about the show be sure to let us know down in the comments or tag us on our social media Um, if you enjoyed this episode please rate review and follow us on apple Podcasts and spotify and subscribe to our youtube channel sharing this episode with your friends really helps us out a lot Uh, But thanks for joining us for this week's episode, and we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. I haven't been paying attention at all, like... (laughs) Too much stuff has been happening.